Hello, I'm Harrison John Bahi. I'm the director, writer, editor, and camera operator of Requiem. Hello, I'm Frank Prell. I am the actor in Requiem. So, uh, this is one of our most famous films. <laughs> and um, fortunately, it's a really dark film. The, uh, it, uh, it is, it's, it's very, I don't know how to, it's, it's, it's got a lot of kind of controversy surrounding it due to the, the, the dark nature of it, you know, but. I mean, yeah, it is controversial, but I mean, that doesn't mean it's not true. Um, for the, I guess for those who have seen it and are just watching it for this commentary's sake, you know that the character uh, commits suicide in the end. You know, a lot of people were shocked to find that he actually did commit suicide. However, in the end, I felt that if he did survive, it just would have been an insult to actual victims of suicide because sometimes not all stories like these end well. And this was meant more as a PSA that to let people who don't know about the you know problems of suicide know that it exists and people do die from it. So that's what I wanted to convey at the end. Not, not a sense of hopelessness, but a sense that people who don't know that much about suicide uh, will learn more by watching this video. So I think we portrayed the kind of not at the, the stages like the feelings that people would normally go through because we've all been I think most of us can relate to the to being in a dark place in your mind and kind of even even contemplating doing something like this is it's a very dark dark place and path to go down but uh I think with the shots we did and you know the, the way the story progresses it really demonstrates the feelings of somebody who uh, you know is going through such a uh, challenging and really rough decision yeah that's one of my favorite parts is leaving the note for for mom yeah. um I suppose behind some technical aspects here uh, the, uh, this movie was predominantly shot out of sequence uh, for many purposes, you know. Locations were 20 miles apart from each other. We had some people on certain days. Like right now, this is during the day, and this next scene right here is actually during the night. We just faked the sunlight coming in, so I thought we pulled that off quite well. <laughs> the beers. <laughs> well, this is the wonderful actress, uh, Don Nixon, from Arizona. Playing my mother. Playing my mother. And a uh, child actor, Sean Laguna, from here as well. Playing young me. me young you. <laughs> young me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And this was shot in Tempe, and this here is shot in Fountain Hills, Arizona, which is next to my hometown, uh, Fort McDowell, Arizona. They're pretty much neighboring towns. So that's why we shot this out of order. This is probably one of the first... One, one of the first few things we started shooting, so. I think the whole, you know, walking through the, the park thing was, that's a great shot. And it's kind of sad seeing this character. He's, you feel that he's truly alone as he goes to his, you know, kind of like his final journey. And you feel that, that you know, overwhelming sadness as he kind of looks back on what ultimately made him make this decision. And just a just more a little trivia here, that, that uh, brief clip of the POV of this character getting beat up at school was actually part of an earlier version of Requiem that we started shooting in 2011 with an entirely different cast before, before even knew <laughs> Frank. So we just, I decided to port over some of that stuff to this version so we didn't have to shoot it again. So. That's really cool. It's just, uh, you know, we shot this in 2012, and we shot the earlier Requiem in 2011 that never really went anywhere. So it's pretty magical to still use footage for the same thing from two different years and this one film. Yeah, same project. Mm -hmm. Hey, can you tell us about that picture? <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that's a real, obviously, real photo of uh, me and uh, Andy, the, the, the actor who plays my best friend in this film yeah. that Andy right there uh, we've actually known each other since fifth grade in 
in uh, elementary school, and we were actually really best friends in fifth grade, and he moved away to California, and it was really sad, and then we ended up <laughs> both working at Abercrombie and Fitch together, so, and we were kind of reunited years, years later, and it was really cool that he could play this role in this, this film. Yeah, it didn't really take for didn't take very long for his scenes. It took maybe about an hour or two to get all of his scenes done. I'm a very uh, fast filmmaker, so we just get what we need and get out of there. So that's why we were able to do that that fight scene in the middle of a park with people in it. So yeah, and you know it, it's kind of awkward since we were yelling and he was punching me, but you know little kids seemed a little concerned. <laughs> But it, nobody was in real danger. It, it went smoothly. But weren't you pretty... Uh, weren't there some... Or did you trip in that fall? No, you didn't. No, I... No. That was a... That was a staged fall. Ah. Uh, <laughs> you're just fucking with your director. Oh, uh, no. That's <laughs> acting right there. And uh, these scenes right here... Um, well, no. There's nothing really right here. There's just... Other than the fact that the great performance from Don Nixon, I was just... It's an all-around great performance right here, you know? I remember um, the score. You, you, I was waiting for you guys to film this in your guest house. Oh, yeah. And, and to help her kind of get into the, 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 the mind of the scene, she, we, you blasted the score to this film that you were going to use. Yeah. Just blasted it so she could hear it. Yeah, no, yeah, it was on its loudest settings. It was a song. <laughs> yeah. It was a song from the assassination of Jesse James, song for Bob. It was, it by itself was just a very powerful song, and Don really took that song to heart and used it to fuel her emotions for that scene. And it worked very well because very effective. And it's, and it's what we ended up using for a temp score in the end. So I was getting sad mm -hmm. just hearing it. Mm -hmm. And the good thing about the goodbye, because <laughs> you, know. you see, unfortunately, Frank's handwriting looks like a little kid, so I had to write the goodbye. It's not so. that bad. Uh, it's, it's that bad. No. I have a shaky hand, mm -hmm. but I did actually write it when it shows me writing it in the beginning, and then Harrison kind of replaced it because my handwriting sucks. <laughs> you know, <laughs> unfortunately, going going back. Uh, Unfortunately, this site where we're at, you know, it's a very unfortunate site. I mean, I had shot there a long time ago, like even before Navajo Joe Films was a thing, you know, and recently just found out that this place, this tunnel is an actual suicide hotspot. Uh, from what I've learned, at least three people have committed suicide in this tunnel, which I did not know at the time of filming. I honestly just thought it was a great looking location you know it just seemed to be uh, a good place for what this film was going for uh, it, w it wasn't until literally like a few weeks ago right now in 2013 that I found out that p people actually committed suicide in this tunnel so that's kind of eerie it is it, like uh, having been in there I don't know it's well the the film that we decided to yeah. shoot in there is just kind of you know, it also makes it kind of concerned for myself, too, because I was... People, like, if fans of Navajo Joe films will find that a lot of our films are really dark in nature, but when people, like, some people have concerns about my about my current mental status, and I'm... I and did, I swear I to you... Too, yeah. yeah. I swear to you that as dark as our films can get, uh, I'm a generally happy person. For the most part. For the most part, you know. But you can really move people with these these uh, kind of more seriously yeah. toned films, and you know, there's a you have a good way of uh, you know showcasing that 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 sadness. And oh boy, yeah, this scene right here, <laughs> man. Oh boy. Uh, again, I'm very sorry for people who got scared by this scene right here. Well, I mean, you see, I mean that is what I was going for, but I mean, we in the take we actually had me reacting to the yeah. to the you know the gunshot where I would fall down, but I didn't include that because it, it just looked too silly. I figured that it was what? more it was more effective to just hear well, up and not see true, it. That's true. Now this is an actual real statistic here. 
based uh, off of a suicide website. I should hope so. Uh, from the U.S. government, and well, unfortunately, not. it is true. You know, a lot of people do commit suicide, especially nowadays when when uh, kids are not only just bullied, but they're also bullied for being different. Like a lot of a lot of kids who are LGBT or just you know. Well, I w- that's why I did this film. I was severely bullied as a you know a, a kid and a teenager, so I. I can relate to, you know, being in that dark uh, state of mind. So this this really had an impact on, on me as well as the actor. Alrighty, well, that's the end of this commentary. Thank you for listening, viewers. Thank you very much. See ya. <laughs> Bye.